Oh, what is going on, guys? I'm Tyler. I'm Josh. And Jackass Forever is no perfect movie, which is exactly what we wanted with this. Now, um, Josh, have you ever seen a Jackass movie before this? I've never seen a Jackass movie in my life. Never. I've only seen the, the Family Guy parody where they drive the shopping cart off the roof. That's it. That's right. And you could see the uh, hair clippers skit being parodied with that. Because funny thing, like I watched Jackass on YouTube on and off when I was in high school. And the only reason I never like tried watching the show in full or the movies because my parents were always there to say, Gosh, that looks fucking stupid. Wonder what their parents think. Stupid stuff like that. Yeah, we didn't have MTV. We had basic cable. We were, like, stuck with, like, CTV, CBC, NBC, The Weather Channel, and PBS. So we could watch Julia Child, but no jackass. See, funny, when, whenever MTV was on at my house, it was always just the fucking music videos mm. on loop. Ah. Nothing else. And those music videos were shit. I'm not an MTV person, so I really don't care what the pushback is going to come from this, but... Oh, man. I, I, I love... There's this there's this channel um, uh, on the TV. We got a new TV because ours broke, right? Yeah. And uh, they got this 80s music video channel. They play so much Millie Vanilli. I'm so happy. Millie Vanilli. Yeah. No, like, I don't know. I, I dig that song, girl. You know it's true. That is fucking insane, but... Um, I almost went to see Action Park, the movie that Johnny Knoxville... Um, co-wrote based on that action point theme park yeah yeah i saw that, that one yeah i went and saw that in theaters and i never want to go near bad grandpa because that just looks too disgusting even for my taste and even based on the shit that we just watched here but um as i pointed out to you action park came out the same weekend as a quiet place and if anybody watches my channel you know where my heart's at with stuff like that yeah but Months ago when this movie was supposed to came out, the trailer hit, and I could not believe that I actually laughed hard in the trailer alone, and I was starting to piece together what the massive appeal and call following Jackass gets from an analytical perspective that I just sat there and went, you know what, fuck it. If I can analyze a Jeff Dunham Christmas special, which I have done, and people for whatever reason hated me for that, I still don't get that. Jeff Dunham did a Christmas special? Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's really oh. damn funny. I mean, I, one I, of those things on Netflix that I watched that nobody liked, the uh, the uh, the Michael Bolton, the Michael Bolton Valentine's Day special was My, hilarious for I'm the Lonely sorry, Island bit. Michael Bolton. Yeah, the Michael Bolton bit. Like he's really he, the Lonely Island comes on and does a bit. He does. Uh, does he, he have Ryan Styles on to make fun I, of him? Because just remember Lonely Island being on there. Because I mean. If you are on Netflix... Of course, Lonely Island was there. And, and you haven't seen the Bash Brothers? Like, seriously. It's the best. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's half an hour. It's hilarious. Unbelievable. But yeah, I just sat there and went, you know what? I got to see this. I got to take somebody with me. I was going to take a co-worker, but he uh, quit work recently because of how many times we got fucking locked down. And honestly, I don't blame him, but... He did say we were still cool to hang out, and of all people, I know one person who I can definitely bring this back to. And, um, wow, I am ashamed to say that I laughed my ass off the entire time, and I yeah. dare say this is one of the best comedies to have come out in the past few years, just because, in case you haven't guessed, these guys really do not give a fuck what people think. All they care about is what entertains themselves, and their friends, which is something you really don't get in comedy anymore, and it's fucking pathetic. And what you also don't get from comedies very, very often is slapstick. I don't know if you guys knew this, but slapstick can be and often is funnier than the verbal comedy shit that we are stuck with nowadays, where most movies and shows are really just people improving off of one another and coming up with the latest buzzwords to turn into a joke. But enough about uh, network sitcoms. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. no laugh track. No. I honestly think I'm driving the wrong way. <laughs> you sh no, no, no. We're, we're on we're the right way. We're going path. the right way? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, we're good. I think I'm headed the right way, but I feel like I'm headed, like, far away. But, oh, my goodness. The stunts in this movie were fantastic. Oh, I... Of all the clips I've seen on YouTube and in the first movie, because I have seen Jackass number one the night before we recorded this, in between Guy's Grocery Games, I was watching the first movie, 
And I, even when it wasn't that funny, it was still mind-blowing and impressive. The great thing about all of these movies is that it's directed by the same guy who directed the entire show, Jeff Tremaine. And there's nothing terribly special about the style of this movie. Other no, than... no, no. The movie is very, very basically shot. It's it's in focus and they have like some slow motion that they probably use some 60 frames per second there, but literally nothing else than that. It's very, very basic. Uh, yeah, if anything stylistic happens, it's really from the slow motion where the reenactment just makes it feel a lot more impactful once you see where these guys yeah. got hurt and how bad the impact was. Particularly one involving a grown man who is bare-ass naked and a pogo stick. No, no. The worst replay was the spider. Oh, that was... Oh, I could yeah, not do the that's spider. Right. The spider was awful. <laughs> and that kind of ties into one thing that I really loved about this movie. It can make you laugh at shit that you personally in these positions would be just as, if not more, terrified than the people who are being pranked. Because I hate bugs. I hate looking at genitals because... Yeah, there was that's a lot of that in the movie. I could not believe how uncensored this was. Like, this was only 18A. This seems like an NC-17 in Yeah, whoever areas. said the phrase, just the tip, did not mean this movie. <laughs> that's the other thing. Like, I got comfortable staring at these guys naked and only feeling incredibly dirty whenever something super fucked up happens. This gave me, uh... This gave me Midsommar vibes in regards to how far these guys are willing to go. I don't know if I only get comfortable looking at my face on video. Yeah, but, um... <laughs> there is one thing about Tremaine's visual style that stands out from comedies nowadays. The entire bit, whether it be a joke or a slapstick routine, you see the action and the reaction all within one take. There's no pretentious music video style editing that you would expect from an MTV movie where it cuts away. No, they linger on the setup and the aftermath of the stunt every single time. And even when it's not funny, it's still incredibly impactful. The lack of wires or protective padding or anything like that it serves equally to the shock value, but it's never done too recklessly. They always have medics on set when it comes down to the animal stunts, which I gotta say, those were some of the most laugh-inducing bits. They're staged in a respectful manner where the animals have absolutely no threat whatsoever. There is no position where they can get harmed, but I still paid laser focus attention to the end credits just for that humane association stamp, which thankfully, yeah, that. which thankfully was there. And that makes it a lot more impressive too. Yeah, and the, uh, uh, the animals in there, I mean, they had like, they, they had a bear, which was nuts. Um, they had a spider. They, the, the way they did that rattlesnake bit was, that was probably my favorite bit of the whole film. Like, the snake wasn't there. It was, as, the, as they said in, because we got the uh, extended, like, they got a little interview at the end there. That's right. Yeah, they said that it was all psychological. I think that was probably the funniest bit that the audience laughed the hardest at. It was, I was out of breath. I was coughing for 10 minutes straight, and I had a headache. I feel like I got whiplash just from that one bit alone. I'm if sure you they've done that bit sometime. If you go see the movie and there's a segment called Silence of the Lambs. That's the best one. Fucking amazing. I mean, the Silence of the Lambs was really good. They did the cup test, which looked painful. And just um, when you think that it got to, gets to the one sport where it would be the most dangerous to try a cup, they surprise you over and over again. The other great thing about the direction with this, I keep saying it over and over again, but it's true because the direction in this is surprisingly a lot more clever than people would give it by simply being as straightforward as you can possibly get, which sounds pretty basic and mundane, and that's mainly because I just lost my train of thought because say what you will about these stunts, whether you love or hate them, they are memorable. Some of oh, yeah. their most memorable, just based on the stakes that they come up with. But visually, they'll position the actors and the other equipment within the frame so that you can instantly start to imagine what could possibly happen. 
And then Knoxville opens his mouth and reveals what is actually going on. They don't spell out what the stunts are going to be and get suspension suspense out of just anticipating it. They actually fuck with us, the audience, by assuming too much, along with these guys who are just such fucking idiots, but it is lovable. Well, I mean, like, they did a trivia thing there with these flip-flops, right? <laughs> and they're like, they're like, who plays piano on Elton John's Mad Man in the Water? And it takes them a while to figure out Melton John. Elton John, and then it's like, what? What's what's the square root space or whatever of of a five by five square? That's twenty five, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like okay, these are, good. I yeah. felt. I felt. And then what was the other question? There was one more. The other question was, uh, how do you piano. spell dumbbell? Yeah, and then and then the is a piano. What type of instrument is percussion? And that's what I thought. I, I, I just said keys. I thought keys was its own no, category. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's percussion because of the way it processes sound, but I could be very wrong. Um, the cameos were a lot of fun. I fucking love Eric Andre. He is my favorite. I don't know if you've ever... I love to watch a, a lot of Adult Swim. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Smiling Friends, Rick and Morty. Um, but the Eric Andre show, oh my goodness. Just seeing him smash a death or yell and rage. And, and the spirit what he took his stunt in was delightful. And then MGK, who I'm a, loved his last I album. I cannot believe Machine Gun fucking Kelly MGK, was in MGK, I, I know people don't like him, and he had the thing with Eminem. I love that guy. He He's just living his best life. Him and Travis Barker making some good music. He's made some of some of the most, most listened to music in my catalog over the last many years. I listen to a lot of Eminem, but I love Machine Gun Kelly, but oh man, he was not ready for that slap. <laughs> And then, and then I think my favorite one was Tyler, the creator. I couldn't believe that. Because that, he's just sitting there on an electrified piano. <laughs> like, it was just chaos. Oh, my goodness. But, like, I mean, watching the movie, the one thing I would say is there's that one old guy who I didn't know what he was doing there. The old guy is Johnny Knoxville in makeup. No, no, the other old guy. The older, larger gentleman. Is he the one that... Like, pierced uh... someone. Oh, was he the one that did the boxing... He's the one who did. He did. He did the. He did the. He did the wedgie thing, and he did. He did a couple other things. Um, but he was the older. He's the older, larger gentleman. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I, maybe right. he was on the OG show, and I don't know. But like, he felt like he was just there, and he had very major limitations on what he could do. I was thinking the same thing about Wee Man for the longest time because it really just seemed like his only purpose was to react to all of the pratfalls. And then once I was starting to think that the next three bits feature him heavily, and as per usual, taking as much physical risk as the rest of the cast does. Well, there was really a sweet. there was a pay dispute that they sorted out on set. I saw it on the Stern thing. Yeah, there was a lot of shit that went with this movie. One guy, one of the OGs, got fired. And as far as I know, I'm pretty sure the fart sequence is the only bit that he's in. Oh, who's that? Some guy named Bam, who's a skateboarder. Okay. And um, dude got a little threatening towards the director. And that director uh. got uh, a three-year restraining order on the guy, which... Hey, I don't know. I had a blast with this. The opening and closing, though, was very creative in the most disgusting, humanly way possible. The opening sequence feels so different from the rest of the movie in that it feels filmed. It's a good way to introduce the, the cast the way they did it. Yeah, they introduce some brand new introductory members who are a lot younger. And I gotta yeah. say, these guys leave just as big of an impression as the original cast because one thing about Jackass that I've never liked is that you only recognize Knoxville, Steve-O, and Wee Man. The rest of them are pretty indispensable. I think it's because they all have the same sort of hairstyle and look low quality footage and such. Yeah, and what's great about the new cast members is they all have distinct features in regards to physical traits or their personality. There is this one large gay guy that he's, I- He's so funny. That guy, he Zach- He owned every stunt, every stunt. Zach Loved was it. insane. He took every stunt that he could like he was a champ. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the guy with the mohawk was brand new, but his reactions to the scenarios he had oh, to Oh, the recorded, Aaron guy? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen the rest. Like Aaron said, but... was fucking hilarious. The, the scared shitless look on he, that he has half the film where he's just like, oh my God, I am going to die was hilarious to witness. It's biting my hand. It's biting my hand. 
Yeah, um, I didn't think I was gonna like a guy named Poopies, of all things. And no, the nickname, he's got a lot of personality, though. The nickname that they gave him, I wouldn't have guessed that come from, but that well, was Well, they, they told us about the nickname and the special features. That's true. Uh, the screening that we went to had some bonus behind-the-scenes yeah. features that... I guess was supposed to tease whether or not they're going to make future movies with these new cast members, because I mean... I'm totally into it. Yeah, like, I could honestly watch an entire movie that's just those three or four people by themselves, and one of them even brought their dad in on some pranks. Which yeah, was... no, no, his dad, his dad uh, had gotten out of jail and needed jobs, so he brought him on set and they put a... <laughs> they did the... They put, they put a cone of silence on his head. Oh. That's a cone of silence. That's exactly the way cone oh, of no, silence no, I'm... looks... In the episode um, where oh, they go I undercover bet. in the opera in season one, I think it's like 20, episode twenty four or something, twenty three. Yeah, because there's twenty six in that season. But, but yeah, what, it was fun. One thing that the original cast has in common with these new guys, and I think, is the reason that you find the Jackass cast so likable, even though they're doing these these life threatening and incredibly pointless and pathetic pranks, and you still yeah. sympathize with them. And I think. Because of how experienced they are as stuntmen, even though they're not intelligent, they're still showing off how creative they are and how brave they are as human beings. You watch the scenarios that these guys get put in, and you have a lot more respect for them than you do yourself because you know that you would completely oh, pussy I out would in Oh, I never do scenarios. that. I'd walk away from that set immediately. <laughs> yeah, if... If I were on that set, I would put a mask on just so I wouldn't have to go anywhere near these fuckers. But, I mean, I think one of the charming things about the film is it, it felt so... I think because, like, when you get to a, a fourth film in the franchise, like, you know what you're going in to expect into a Jackass movie, right? Yeah. But it still felt like they had some new ideas, which felt really great. Um, it didn't feel... And I, I haven't seen the other ones, so maybe I'm wrong. But it didn't feel like they were doing the same stunts again, except for, like, two or three. And even in those exceptions, it feels like they're expanding upon the idea. It's like they watched the movie and said, if only we did this, and then in the next movie they can take full advantage of that opportunity. Yeah, for sure. But honestly, great time. It might be... Yeah. I honestly... Uh, this is the first movie I saw this year in theaters. I, have, I haven't seen anything in theaters. I mean, we did a staff movie night, but uh, that was Licorice <laughs> Pizza, and that, that movie did nothing for me, so... Uh, and that totally makes sense. No, no, I, I think I think Licorice Pizza was beautiful and well acted. I just think that the way Paul Thomas Anderson directs, it just has meandering storylines, and none of them really tie into anything. You're you're watching a life. That's fair. You're observing a moment, and if that's what you're expecting and that's what you like, that's perfect. But that's not for me. But still, a decent flick. Just I don't. I'm not a big Paul Thomas Anderson fan. So. I wanted more of the side characters than what we got. Like, even though the moments we had were like, still good. Um, yeah, I mean, the side character I like mostly, and that was Bradley Cooper. But, uh... I was more What into, happened to uh, that scene where he smashed the windows with the two crowbars in the credits? That wasn't in the movie. That was such a letdown. I couldn't I believe I really hope that was in the movie. But, but, you know, I would like to see Bradley Cooper do a stunt, you know? Like, why not? See... <laughs> like, he did that in Licorice Pizza. I would love if there were more reality movies in this format that were trying to be... Imagine if we made a movie that was competitive in a group of teams trying to make the best slapstick stunts a la Chaplin or Keaton come up with oh, their own creative man. scenarios. Because that's the kind of vibe that I get watching these guys show off their imagination with these insane stunts. I like to think that this was if Blake Edwards was a frat boy. Oh, Blake Edwards has done some of the, well, besides the Pink Panther, but, like, his other work, like, people love Breakfast at Tiffany's, except for the one bit, but, yeah. like, people yeah. love a lot of, or what what's new Pussycat is incredible, but, you know, slightly dated. And was probably, that him? That was him. I thought that was somebody else, because I know Warren Beatty hired Woody Allen to rewrite the script, and, of course, Allen wrote himself into it, everybody loved it more, and then Peter yeah, Sellers came on lot. and stole all of his lines. Peter Sellers was funny, though. I mean... I know that What's Up, Doc, is Bogdanovich. And oh. With best, Blake Edwards. Best, best Peter Sellers performance, by far, is The the Mouse That Roared. Best movie I've seen by him. Is it's, that the one where he's three or four different he's people? eight different characters. Okay. It's a tiny country waging... That wages war on the U.S. so they can get into the U.N. so they can get... So they, so they can get right. extra money. Yeah. That's literally the plot. It's, one of the, it's, it's literally The Nutty Professor with Eddie Murphy, but actually funny. And it's only an hour and ten minutes. It knows when to exit. It knows when to say, 
you've had enough screen time and that's what I love about it. Yeah, for sure. Because it doesn't linger. Like the first Pink Panther, as much as I love that, it lingers. Like there's a lot of dead space in that movie. And I, I do love the movie through and through and I've watched it over and over again. But, uh, and David Niven's great and as Charles Lytton. True. But there's just a True. lot of dead space they could have just not had. But that's the, the problem with 60s comedies. And I like how this movie, even though when it takes its time, is still incredibly fast paced. Mm, yeah. Sometimes to a disadvantage because the one problem I have with Jackass is sometimes there are entire bits that really only last about not even a minute. Yeah. And it feels... I want to say that they're inserted in there so that you're still entertained, but you have time to catch your breath in between the other jokes. Yeah, like some the, of them did feel like commercial breaks. Like the fist thing was the fist thing was um, was pretty funny. The fist thing the, was the one guy running fantastic. down the street. He goes to do a jump, and then a fist hits him. Like that's crazy. Cool. Or this great one where you see a guy bicycling towards a building. Then he crashes <laughs> into a tarmac, and yeah. that's what the building was. Like sight gags like that are so imaginative and refreshing to see that it makes me wish that we got more comedies that were slapstick or physically oriented it's really hard for me to it's really hard to describe i mean like there was a lot of good stuff in there for sure yeah but i mean johnny knoxville has has had his share of stuff like there's those people like i've always enjoyed johnny knoxville on screen even in something like the last stand where arnold schwarzenegger is sort of phoning it in a little bit He's crazy right. fun in that movie. Forgot about he has that. a giant turret machine gun. He shoots things. He's literally a madman. He's probably high while doing that, and he's having a great time. You know? Have you? Did you see his face? His eyes are always like yeah, rolling back absolutely. into his head. Um, but and this is for this is the type of movie that you either love Johnny Knoxville or you don't, because there's a lot of Johnny Knoxville. Um, I didn't get that vibe. I, he was more of a host in this one because oh yeah, for those who have followed the history of this production. This is going to be his last Jackass movie, yeah. and there's one stunt in particular that it's in the trailer, but I'm not going to give away what it is. Wasn't that he... should let that should let you know how many hits that he's taken and how much more yeah. that he can take. I mean, this dude's fifty. I already. think the finale was insanity. I think they really nailed the finale there because we got the one stunt that he injured himself in that you, that was that was there, and then the finale was like they did this basic setup. And then they added on to it, and then they added, and they added, and they added, and they added, and the one guy was literally like, I want to quit this movie. <laughs> like, that's that's where they were. The shell-shocked reactions from these guys yeah. is utterly insane to the point where you wonder if these guys actually did get PTSD from this movie. I don't know. The Silence of the Lambs bed, I was out of breath the entire time because these guys were shell-shocked. One of them literally cowered into the corner and you could see his eyes in the in the night vision goggles that made him look as scary as a fucking rat i think the best line from that bit was i, can, I found a door <laughs> i'm not going for it i'm not going for it i'm gonna stay here yeah because without spoiling anything people are trapped in a room but once they're not it actually is just as mm. bad if not a tad bit more worse. of that I slapstick stuff at the end there which is really good like that had a big good slapstick bit on that and the sound effects yeah, were really yeah, yeah. good it went it knew when to be natural and when to add stuff in because there were obvious moments where there's no way that electrocution makes that exact sound like a cartoon but and well for once we're okay with talking during a movie. This is an audience interaction movie. This is not a cinema <laughs> experience. As much as we ran about people talking during films, I want this is to the exception. Hear, I want to hear what people have to say. I want people to guttural laugh. I want people to gasp. Did you see the people in front of us? They're like leaning in their they seats. They leaned in. They <laughs> covered their mouth. They leaned back. This is one of the few times where I'm actually okay with people yep. kicking up their feet like it's a fucking ottoman. This was just a, a college bro movie. It absolutely <laughs> is. It is unpretentious. It tries to be as original and creative with the stunts as possible while expanding upon the ones that you never thought you knew needed to be remade. Especially a certain sacrifice with Wee Man, a filet mignon... And a vulture. Man, that vulture is dope. I dig birds. birds that are like vulture my thing. was insane. Like vultures it reminded, are so cool. It reminded me of a picture my dad had. He was holding a macaw when he was in Mexico. Oh, I just nice. sat there. I'm like, well, oh, top this shit. 
I love birds. I, I've always had birds growing up. I'm fascinated with birds and their migration patterns. And that's like one of my hobbies to research birds. Vultures are fascinating. I've I've only seen the first movie, but after seeing this, I'm I might have to binge these or at least at my COVID is over party, whenever the fuck that's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be some weed and there's going to be Jackass forever. We'll do, we'll do a Josh and Tyler show on Jackass two and three. We might have to at this point, but um, our, our next episode will be Chronicles of Narnia whenever I can find the time to watch the third one. <laughs> it's uh, incredibly fast and that's one of the problems, but uh, I'm going to give Jackass forever a four out of five, just based on what kind of movie it is. And, I shouldn't have to tell you whether or not you're going to like this or not. I'm just here to elevate and analyze what is great about sophomore-ish stupid humor that in a fictional movie, I would say is lazy and uninspired. But with this, because it's real actors, real stuntmen trying to impress themselves and themselves only, it's a lot more admirable and it's a lot more funny and scary. I give it a go see it at a movie theater. Don't buy it on Blu-ray. See it with an audience. Have a great time. Because uh, it's it's not highbrow, it's just fun. In days like these, we need a movie that is just there to entertain without a story. And there are more movies like that than we give it credit for. I hope it gets nominated. If they have a, a segment for stunts at the Oscars, this should be nominated. Wait. I still can't believe that's not even an Oscar Stunt category. Stunt should be a category, because stuntmen do a lot of work, and I think we should honor that. And let's be honest, it's the most life-threatening. I and, feel like yeah. that alone warrants See, an Oscar. See, this production of Jackass Forever, which I guess that's really clever without putting a four in it, is the probably, and I'm going to I'm gonna just say this, most expensive production besides whatever Tom Cruise is doing right now, insurance-wise. The fact that this costs more than movies that do stunts with CGI... I mean, really put that into perspective. Well, I miss physical stunts in movies, but... And the fact that one-tenth of this budget was just on COVID testing, yeah. and meanwhile, the nine million was building shit, <laughs> not drawing shit. Yep. I mean, CG has its place, but I love physical stunts. So yeah, and there are so many... The slow-mo is so surreal that you'd swear it would have to be CGI, mm -hmm. but it's all the more mind-blowing and all the more hilarious that it is real oh this is a good time go see it just, just go see this movie um take a take a take an edible like me and also take whatever aspirin take a DD too yeah take an aspirin <laughs> because you are going to get whiplash from some of the scenes in this movie so guys thank you as always for watching thank you so much for accepting this at the last minute hey i saw an interview on howard stern and i thought okay <laughs> If you have seen Jackass Forever or if you've seen the others, let us know in the comments below what you thought. What is your favorite of the four or the six or seven if you count the 1.5, 2.5 unrated shit? Just let us know down below. Be sure to check out his channel that I put in the description below and the awesome As Weekly As Possible podcast that we do. Oh, and I have a special announcement for you, Tyler. Do tell. Uh, starting Monday, I'm bringing back the Josh cast three days a week to talk about things. It's not just going to be, not just movie news, things I want to talk about. So it's going to be a little bit of movie news, whatever movie. I'm going to, I'm actually going to mix Vinyl Madness in there. You know, I'm feeling back into it after the set thing. We're back. We're at it. We're good. We're going to make some content here three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We'll have three shows. Talk about, I might review some music because I really do want to get into music review, but I'm not a musician, so I don't know the terms. I just know what I like. That's And uh, yeah. the chain smunkers are awful. That's what I know. And uh, you know Adele's good. That's my music. Chain smokers are fine. Overplay is bad. <laughs> they, <laughs> that's true. The that's chain true. smokers should have been in this. I wanted them to get hit real bad. <laughs> but anyway, that's for me. That's. Thank you as always, guys, for sticking through this incredibly long vlog. Be sure to be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews right here on Josh Gofton. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Rock and roll. Get this stuff.